This is the Chapel Real Estate Show, episode number 33. Welcome to the Chapel Real Estate Show, your source for the latest real estate information so you can buy, sell, and invest with the best in Texas. Whether you're a first-time buyer, a current homeowner, or a seasoned investor, you've come to the right place. We're here to simplify all things real estate so you can achieve your goals of property ownership with your hosts, Daniel and Roger Chapel. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Chapel Real Estate Show, your place where you can buy, sell, and invest with the best in Texas. I am your host, Roger Chapel. So today, we're going to talk about government-backed loans. And fortunately, it looks like uh, buyers who are in the past a uh, year or so that were unable to buy may now be ready to buy. So we're going to get into a little bit of that. We're also going to discuss the difference between down payment and closing costs. That has come up yet again earlier this week. And finally, for investors, have we got a deal for you. Things are starting to happen around in the Austin area. So all these negative naysayers talking about this market bubble and a huge crash and all of that, we're going to dis discuss a little bit of that as well. So let's get to it, shall we? First of all, today's chapel chunk. Again, we always want to provide a, a nice little tidbit of information that you can use throughout the week. Uh, so today's chapel chunk is if you've been on the fence about buying or selling just because of this crazy market that we've been in, it's time to get off the fence. The reason being is that it looks to me like the market has stabilized. And now that the market is much more stable than it has been in the past six months to a year, then I think now is actually a really good time to either sell or buy. And if you've been uh, considering that, we definitely need to talk. Uh, the market, although the prices have jumped quite a bit, they're still relatively uh, affordable. And I think it's uh, now rent rates are getting ready to go up. And when rent rates go up, uh, you're going to see that you can actually afford to buy versus uh, uh, paying somebody else's rent or paying somebody else to rent a house. So at any rate, let's jump into it and uh, let's, let's get busy. So for the past year, year and a half, we've noticed that uh, buyers who had government-backed loans, and that includes USDA loans, FHA, and VA loans, have not been able to compete in today's market. And the reason being, and it's so multifaceted and it's a very complicated issue to understand, but uh, from a seller's perspective and a buyer's perspective, it's important that you understand what we're talking about here. Over the past year or so, we've watched prices skyrocket in the Austin area. And it's not just in the Austin area, by the way. It, this has happened across the country. So we're talking about a nationwide trend in just about every market across the country. So uh, what we've seen is that people who were, were government-backed loans, the, the USDA, VA, and FHA loans, uh, the, some of the issues that come up with those, for a seller anyway, is appraisal. Appraisal is always a big deal uh, because uh, for these other government-backed programs, in most of them, the buyer cannot pay more than what the appraised value of that home is. And keep in mind, the agents on both ends of the deal, whether they're the listing agent or the buyer's agent, they can actually do some research to try to get close to what the appraisal is, but we're not appraisers. So we can't turn around and, and give you an opinion of value on a particular property. We can just tell you what the trend has been and whether or not a property has uh, met that value or whether or not we think it will meet value at a particular price. So the trouble is, is that let's assume, I'm just going to use general math here. Let's assume we submit an offer on a $300,000 house. Well, for a government-backed loan, that house has to appraise for $300,000 in most instances. Now, a, uh, a conventional loan doesn't necessarily care so much about the, the, or at least a buyer with a conventional loan, doesn't necessarily care so much about whether or not the house meets appraisal as long as they can pay for the difference. What does that mean? If the appraisal comes in at, say, three twenty-five dollars instead of three fifty, dollars if a conventional buyer has that $25,000 in extra cash, then they can pay that at the closing table and still be able to purchase the home. But for a government-backed loan, and typically these buyers need that kind of assistance. They need government assistance in order to be able to purchase these homes, which means they need help with closing costs or down payment. There's down payment assistance programs and all that kind of stuff. They're not going to be able to have the cash to be able to make up for that gap. So what that does is it takes these folks out of the market currently. So uh, that's been where we're at for the last year. 
is that these people with government-backed loans are just not able to purchase right now. And it's been extremely frustrating, uh, not just for the agents involved, but uh, more importantly for the buyers involved. So now they've kind of taken a back seat. They've gone and they've, they've uh, uh, leased out properties for the time being, waiting for the market to stabilize. So what's happened is over the past year or so, we've seen appraisals come in at much higher values. So what that means is, is that for buyers who are paying, you know, in a, in a year ago, they were paying 20% above listing. Well, we can thank the cash and conventional buyers for bringing that market up because now it's to the point where these appraisals are going to meet. And what we're seeing is a slowdown in the market to the point that uh, it's not a traditional slowdown. What it is is that these prices have now stabilized and we don't have 15 or 20 uh, uh, offers coming in on one specific property, driving the prices through the roof. Instead, what we're seeing now is that home prices have actually gone up and that homes are still selling at or just a little above listing price, uh, especially when there's multiple offers. And here recently, my team has had at least two different offers that we've been able to get accepted that were below listing price. Now, with that said, we're not talking about dramatically below because like I said, agents are now pricing these homes uh, at what today's current market value is. And what we're going to see in those, and what we have seen already is the trend for those appraisals to actually come in at that value. So uh, at least from that standpoint, I think it's really a good time now for federally backed uh, buyers to be able to jump back in the game and let's see if we can't get you a house. So uh, I talked a little bit about price of stabilizing. I, wanna, I want people to understand why that is. We have such a strong, strong seller's market, even still. So, yes, I did mention a minute ago that we're seeing a shift in the market. It's not a dramatic shift. It's a dramatic shift only if you're looking short term. If you look over the last two to three years, it's not a dramatic shift at all. In fact, all it is is such a small shift that we're still in record territory here. So what do I mean by that? So interest rates are still at historically low rates, historically low. In addition, our inventory is still at historically low inventory. But we have a huge influx of buyers, and everybody knows how the economy is here in Texas, especially in Central Texas with all of these major companies coming here uh, out of California and some out of Connecticut and New York and all that. So we've got buyers coming in from all over the place. And when these buyers are coming in, they still need a home to buy. And they're coming from markets where the real estate is much more inflated than what it is here in Texas. So the idea that they can take a, a home and sell it in California for a million dollars, for example, a million dollar home in California will probably get you about maybe a $2 million home here if, if you're thinking that mindset. But typically what, what, what happens is these folks will take a look at these homes and they sell their home for a million dollars. Now they've got all this cash. They can come here and buy a similar home to what they had out there for maybe $200,000. $300,000, $500,000. So, uh, and that's just in similar size. Some of these homes may need a little bit of work, but, you know, typically I think you understand my trend, my, my point here, and that is when they're selling for such high market prices there in California, then they can come here and they can buy, uh, you know, a, a comparable home for much less than what they sold theirs there for. And what I'm seeing also is that some of those buyers are also getting into investing here, which is an outstanding thing to do. So uh, we're seeing a little bit of a mindset. So for investors that have been investing in Texas over the past several years, they see this trend as being a big negative thing because they see property values going up. Well, what they're not thinking about is, or at least a lot of them anyway, what they're not thinking about or considering is the amount of equity they have in their current properties. So uh, all of us uh, here in Texas now have quite a bit of equity in our homes if we purchased that home more than a year ago. So that's just one of the many things to keep in mind. Okay, for you sellers out there, uh, this is something that I really want you to pay attention to. So when you go to list your home and you're talking to the realtor and there are going to be realtors that are going to tell you what you want to hear, then there's going to be realtors like me that are going to tell you what you need to hear. To me uh, and my team, we run comps on your house. We're very specific about how we run those comps and we explain to you why we do what we do. What we're trying to do is get that home value, not valued, but get that home priced where we think and truly believe and have the evidence to show that it should appraise for. So what that means is that's where you actually need to price that home. And the reason being is it's not too high. It's not too low. It's right where it needs to be priced. So when I keep talking about a home is priced, when, it, when it's priced well, when it's priced the way it should be, that's exactly what I'm talking about. 
So, for example, if you've got a neighborhood where homes are selling for around 400000 for a 2,200-square-foot home on a quarter-acre lot, then you want to try to, f- to find that sweet spot where, where it's going that, that new house that you're about to list is going to appraise for. So we try to come up with enough comps within the area to be able to justify that price. So when we do that, sometimes we'll share that information with the buyer's agent. But most of the time, we have enough comps where even the buyer's agents can, can find those comps as well. Then they need that when they're talking with their buyers about what they think is a good offer. So when you start getting offers in as a seller, there's something very important you need to pay attention to. So when we start getting these offers in, sometimes they'll be just a little below, sometimes they'll be above, sometimes right on what your, your listing price is. But then I've seen sellers decide, you know what, I don't want to sell it for that, so they decline the offer. Well, you really need to pay attention to your listing agreement because when a price is set in that listing agreement and the agents actually bring you a contract with that price on it, then you really need to pay attention to what the fine details are in your listing agreement because uh, if you refuse to sell that house, you could still be liable for the, uh, uh, the commissions to be paid Uh, to that broker. So I haven't seen that happen very often, but it does on occasion happen. So uh, there are some sellers out there who are set on how much they want to sell a house for. So uh, the the house is just going to sit on the market for a little while. Uh, Then there's other sellers who have an idea of what they think their house is worth and they list it. And then all of a sudden they get $50,000, $60,000 more than what they thought they could get. So it just depends. Make sure that you listen to your real estate professional. They really do understand what's going on in the market, and they really do want to get to get you the biggest bang for your buck, but you have to listen to them. You have to go with what they tell you because they're not just making this stuff up. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of put that out there. I've had a couple of instances here recently on our team where uh, sellers have uh, come up with these wild prices that they want for their, their homes, and to be honest, uh, if we can't be realistic about how we're going to list the house, then, you know, people on my team are just not going to list the house. Uh, and the reason being is, you know, we, that's our reputation on the line as well. And we want to be known as the, the agents that are going to tell you not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. And, you know, a lot of times some of those conversations can be kind of rough. And uh, uh, that's okay. That's okay. It's not personal with us. It's all about the business and making sure that you as the seller understand exactly what it is that you're doing when you agree to sell your home. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. So uh, I've seen on the web, I don't know how many times here in the last couple of three weeks, that just drives me insane, where you have all these negative Nellies that have all these thousands of followers that are listening to this bad news. The market is going to crash. There's a housing bubble. The world is going to end. The sky is falling. That is all complete nonsense. And the reason I say that, and, and I know you've heard Daniel and I talking about this in the past, is, I mean, the long story short is people are taking extra money to the table right now. So these homes that are selling have equity in them. So with that, it's not the same as it was in 2007, 2008, when we did have the last market crash. So that's not the case today. Are some of these homes overinflated in price? Maybe. But is it horrible? No, it's not. Is it something that we can deal with? Yes, it is. Uh, so, I mean, some of this stuff just kind of drives me crazy the way that they're, they're selling their, their information. The bottom line is uh, the Texas economy is booming. The, the equity that we have in our homes right now is just astronomical. And because of that, it's, it's a stable housing market. It's, to, it's not a bubble. Uh, it's not going to burst. There may be some... Uh, homes in some areas that may see some decrease in, in uh, the prices, but it's not going to be dramatic. It's, it's just not. We're too stable right now. So uh, I mentioned, too, about the interest rates right now still being at historical lows. So something to take into mind or take into account is what happens across the country when we have, say, uh, international events when we have uh, politics get involved, because all these kinds of things really do play play into this. Uh, And the stock market, what is the stock market doing? What are other investors doing? So all of those kinds of things are extremely important in the housing market. So I've been noticing that gas prices and oil prices are going up, and there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, we had Ida hit in the Gulf, and that has affected uh, oil delivery. It's also affected natural gas delivery. 
And that boils, uh, that actually trickles down to the gas pumps. So we're paying more for gas today than we were before Ida hit. So, and that's happening pretty much across the country, but mostly in the South. Uh, but it, you, you could see that filtering across the country. Additionally, with all the issues going on in the Middle East, and us now having to, uh, us meaning the United States, now having to rely on some of those foreign countries for oil uh, imports, that too has affected oil and gas. So uh, the stock market, when I, when I take a look at the stock market, and I look at that probably, uh, I don't follow it multiple times a day, but I do follow it almost daily. Uh, and I see that it's a little bit more volatile than it has been you know, in the previous month or so. A lot of that has to do with there's so much happening at one time. We've got a pandemic, we had a huge storm, and we have all these issues breaking out in the Middle East. Those three major events all at one time make investors nervous. Additionally, we're, we're looking at inflation, and people don't understand what inflation is. And, you know, inflation, it rears its ugly head every so often, and uh, as an economy, it's one of those things that we have to deal with. So with the government passing all of these, these uh, trillions of dollars or wanting to pass even more trillions of dollars through reconciliation and, and whatnot, basically what's happening is the government is printing more money. What that does is it devalues the dollar. When the dollar is devalued, what is your best hedge against that? That's called inflation, by the way. What is your best hedge against that? Real estate. So for you investors out there, if you're tied up in, in uh stocks and bonds and things of that nature, and that's making you a little bit nervous, then why not take some of that fund, those funds, and invest it into real estate? And it doesn't matter which market you're in. Purchase in that market, and then you'll see how that appreciating asset is going to perform for you over time. I have never uh, lost money in real estate, knock on wood. Uh, I think it could happen at, at some point if I'm not careful with what I'm doing. Uh, but uh, I, my wife and I have never lost out on, on real estate. We just haven't. And the reason being is that it's an appreciating asset over time, and then we've looked for the long term, long haul. So I haven't purchased a piece of real estate that I haven't been willing to hang on to for 10, 15, 20 years. So we have purchased real estate that uh, I thought I would wind up selling uh, probably within a, within a five-year time frame, only to find out, no, I'm going to keep it because – as a rental property, it's making money. And when it's cash flowing, uh, then it's kind of hard to get rid of that kind of an asset. In addition, not only is it cash flowing, but it's appreciating in value. So when it appreciates in value, that allows me to take out a refinance loan where I can take some additional cash out of that equity and invest it into something else. So that literally is taking my money and putting it to work for me. So I, I like that strategy. It works very well. And there's a number of other strategies that, that I can do as an investor that really do help out. So with interest rates, you know, I mentioned a minute ago that interest rates are still at all-time lows, but they are going to creep up. And they're going to creep up because of the devaluing dollar and because of higher oil prices and a declining stock market. All of those kinds of things will cause the uh, interest rates to go up just a little bit. And I've already seen evidence of that. Interest rates have climbed just a hair. But it's not enough to scare investors off. It's not enough to scare buyers off uh, or anything like that. But, you know, when the interest rates get higher, and I do anticipate that they will rise over the next, couple, next year or so, when they get higher, it reduces the amount of property that a person can purchase. Uh, so uh, the reason being is that uh, you have to pay higher interest rate, then more chunk of your money is going towards that interest rate, towards that payment, and less towards the actual mortgage or the cost of the home. So, I mean, at one point, if you could afford a $200,000 mortgage, you may wind up now only being able to afford a $190,000 mortgage. So those are the kinds of things to pay attention to when you have rising interest rates. Uh, so uh, anyway, that's, that's the, the take on that. One of the other things that I noticed, too, and I read an article about this just yesterday uh, that shows proof of inflation is grocery prices. So I've noticed uh, myself in the grocery store, uh, groceries going up in price. But when, I, when the grocery stores, one of the largest is Kroger uh, across the United States, uh, they actually talked about having to raise their, their grocery prices. And the reason being is, well, like we talked about just a moment ago, you've got rising oil prices, you've got rising gas prices, and a lot of these goods still have to be trucked from all over the place. So if there is a good or service or product that is being transported via truck, then the prices are going to go up. 
And guess what, folks? That's just about every single thing that we can purchase. You name it, it gets trucked in somewhere, some kind of way. So with that, we're starting to see an increase in prices there. And even in the supermarkets. And usually the supermarkets are the last place that you'll see prices go up. But that, that, that is definitely happening. The other thing that we saw is new and used car prices have skyrocketed. And there's a number of reasons why that happened. And just like in the housing market, there's been uh, an interruption in the supply chain. So with COVID, the supply chain, first of all, remember, new cars uh, rely on computer chips, many of them. So a lot of these computer chips come from China. So when the pandemic hit, of course, China is shut down. They're not exporting the way that they had been. Now, all of a sudden, we've got uh, a shortage of these chips that need to go into these new cars. They can't be made. Now, uh, these cars sit there. You've got new car dealers who can't purchase vehicles because there are no vehicles to purchase right now. All of their inventory wound up dwindling down. Then you've got nobody that's able to go out and purchase. But then you, turn, you, you take a look at uh, the rental car market. Rental car companies lost because people weren't traveling. They couldn't. The, the United States was shut down. So when the economy is shut down, all of those companies wound up unloading a lot of their inventory and selling that off. Now there's a big gap. So when you see that gap in the supply chain, Again, it's all about supply and demand. When you have low supply and high demand, prices go up. So we've seen that in new and used cars. Used cars have just been crazy to me. You know, typically you think you're better off buying a used car than you are a, uh, uh, a new vehicle, but that's not the case anymore. Now it's uh, literally you're going to have to uh, uh, probably just wait. Either that or pay more for a vehicle, uh, whether you're paying cash or you're getting a loan. So uh, interest rates are still quite low on, on car loans. So, uh, I mean, that, that, there is a positive there, I suppose. But typically, people, people are having to wait uh, to purchase a, another vehicle. So with all of that said, I still look at our housing market and I compare all of that to all of the evidence that we have of higher inflation. Uh, I still think that our market is prime for buyers. I think it's prime for sellers. And I think for the folks that are sitting on the fence about whether or not they want to sell, that talk to a real estate professional. Find out what your home could be worth. And remember... Just because you're looking on Redfin or Zillow or one of these other websites doesn't mean you're going to get a true value for your home. The true value for your home is going to come when a buyer writes a check and pays you for your home. That's when you're going to know what your home is really worth. So everybody else's opinion, whether it be an appraiser, a real estate professional, uh, doesn't matter until you get to the closing table and you get that check for the closing of your home. That's when you're going to know how much your home is worth. And just because your neighbor claims that they sold their home for $500,000, don't think that your neighbor actually sold their home for $500,000. They may have actually only sold it for four thirty-five, dollars but they want to brag about it or boast about it. And that happens more often than you can imagine. So talk to your real estate professional. Try to find out what your home is really worth. And then uh, uh, maybe you list it. Maybe you don't. That is completely up to you. Well, look, folks, I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, I tried to reach out to uh, buyers, sellers, and to uh, my investors in, in all of this. Uh, so uh, I hope you got some good information out of this. Uh, hopefully next week we'll have Daniel back to join us, uh, and we'll, we can uh, do another episode. I wanted to also mention uh, September 11th. So September 11th is a big deal for me. Uh, I'm a prior Marine. I was also in law enforcement for 22 years in the city of Houston. So uh, September 11th is a very, very big deal to me. Uh, the pullout in Afghanistan was not handled the way that it should have been. And the loss of 13 Marines during this, uh, or, uh, I'm sorry, I think it's 12 Marines plus a sailor during this past uh, deal, just uh, uh, this past terrorist thing just flat set me off. So with all of that said, I just wanted everybody to know that uh, uh my heart goes out to all of the families who lost somebody on 9-11. Uh, we and my family and all my team will never forget. We will never forget. And uh, we just wanted everybody to know that uh, it was very heavy on our minds, very heavy on our hearts. Uh, and we appreciate all of you who are in the, uh, in the military serving uh, and protecting for us. We do appreciate that more than you can imagine. And for all of you first responders out there, where your law enforcement, your fire, EMS, uh, work in hospitals. Uh, we really do, uh, at the Chapel Realty Group, appreciate everything that you do for us. So thank you very much, uh, and we'll see you all next week. 
Thank you for joining us this week on the Chapel Real Estate Show. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with a friend and leave us a review. Find us on social media at Chapel Realty Group and online at chapelrealtygroup.com. Until next time.